Hey guys, what's going on? Sonic of the Boss Coin YouTube channel, and today I'm here to bring you another crypto mining video. And today we're working on uh, what is essentially my first ever rig build. However, I've done this build three times now, and this is not my unique build. I got this build off of Bitcoin Talk, specifically from Phil on there. Dude's fucking phenomenal, awesome guy. Gave me just such great help and advice. And shout out to NVOC, who is made by Full Zero on Bitcoin Talk. That guy has developed such an amazing software that really makes these miners essentially DIY plug and play. So let's talk about it. So I don't know if they've come up with a name for it yet, but I've just started calling it Trio because it's three cards. And my boy Ryan calls them the Direct Injecto. So the Direct Injecto Trio. What does that even mean? Well, Direct Inject, like it's on the board, sitting on the board, no risers. It's Trio, three cards. So that's kind of how we got both our names for the same thing. I need a name for something that doesn't have a cool name. Is it even that cool? Of course it is, but it's even cooler with a cool name. So what is it? Two 1080 Ti's and then one Zotac Mini. You could use a 1060, a 1070, a 1080, or you could use other small cards that are gonna give the longer blower fan style card room to breathe. So what do we end up with? Well, my preferred method or setup is with the two MSI Aero 1080 Ti's and then a 1080 Mini. Well, if we're gonna put a Mini on there, let's let's put the baddest one we can, right? Why not? So, I'm coupling that with the Gigabyte Z270P D3 board, okay? This board is awesome, works perfect. I'm using Crucial Ballistics RAM. Uh, again, all of this is per Phil's recommendation. I, this is not my credit, I'm just here replicating what that guy's done, and he's, you know, really a pioneer of this stuff, in my opinion. Next, we've got 750 watt platinum power supply, which is gonna get you what you need to do with this. However, if you're worried about power usage, you can bump up to an 850 and you'll be fine again. EVGA, it's awesome, the way to go. Otherwise, C-Sonic, I'm using both. Other than that, there's some small screws, washers, using these felt pieces over here to space out the board. And then, my favorite piece of all, boom. Boom. See this? Lexar, 16 gigabyte thumb drive. This is your hard drive. Crazy, USB 3.0. So, NVOC fits on there. You write it with HDD raw copy tool, whatever, and boom, 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 plug it in, and you are rocking. It is an amazing setup, okay? In addition to this, you're also gonna need a mouse, a keyboard, a monitor. Uh, it's, really, it's really it, it's really, you could not build a mining rig for less parts than these. I almost forgot, obviously you need an ethernet cord and a processor. So the processor, there's a lot of options you can use. I'm using, the cheapest one you can use is the G4400T. T basically means energy saving in processor terms. This is the 4400. Um, I ordered the wrong one. So I'm wasting power using this, but whatever. It's still pretty cheap. This processor is like 55 bucks. Otherwise, I've got two trio rigs running on a 7100 and a 16100T. So again, those processors are nicer, better, more energy efficient. This one was about half the price by accident. So I got it, screw it, I'm using it. Maybe we'll upgrade down the road, we'll see if sell some rigs. I don't know, until then. Only other pieces you're gonna need, it's gonna be a little power cable like this for your motherboard. You're gonna need some kind of board, plywood. I got this really thick plywood at Lowe's for like eight bucks and I cut it into two pieces and then I have some scrap. But this is what I end up with. And you're gonna need, need uh, sandpaper to work on those uh, edges. As you can see, they get a little rough. But other than that, that's everything you need to build a rig. It's really not too overwhelming once you, you know, just get at it. So step one is to really acquire all the parts. Step two is to mount the board. So what I've taken is just at this little inside, you know, piece of the pen, and I go to each mounting hole, okay? You can tell it's mounting hole with the metal pieces around it. And I draw a circle in there, just real easy, just to make sure I don't move the board. And then the four prongs where the processor goes, I draw a line, and I'll explain about that in a second. So you mark these holes, and then I'm gonna drill them out. All right, so just that simple, mark out the holes, drill them out. Easy peasy. Next step is we're gonna put on these felt pieces to space out the board. And that's why we mark the processor because you know that dips down a little bit lower. Again, I'm not saying this is perfect, this might not even be the exact right way to do it, but it's how I've been doing it. So then you kinda end up with something like this. Next step, you're gonna get the processor on. So you see I've got another one of the G4400s here, and if you don't know how to install a processor, you 
freaking YouTube. It's super easy. Um, I hadn't installed a processor prior to building rigs, so if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Basically, there's this plastic piece on the board. You just pop this out, and then you open the tab. Boom, pops open. You drop the chip in, and with this board, it's really easy and simple. The letters, you know, you read them left to right, and they're upright like this. So you just match it with the board text. So you see how this text is like this? You just match the same text. It also has markings on the processor that match up so that it falls into place properly. Then you're just gonna take the little hinge right here, push it back down. Don't be afraid to use force. It's actually, you get to put a little bit of effort into it. And then you drop this on top. Try to position it so that your uh, fan wire is kind of out of the way. You'll see on this board, it's clearly labeled CPU fan. So I kind of figured that one out eventually and plugged it in there. You're gonna push these down, boom, 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 and they click and lock into place and your CPU is now installed. Next step, we're gonna take these, oh, that was way too many. We're gonna take these little washers, put them in between the screws, and then we're gonna mount that on the board as well as uh, we're gonna install the RAM, which is literally just boom, you click it in, installed, and then we'll move on. So if you look closely, you can see that all the screws are on the board installed with the nylon spacers in between them. Taking out a stick of RAM, just four gigabyte, 2400 DDR4. I'm gonna pop it on the board. Make sure it clicks into place. That's how you know you're good to go. The RAM is actually offset, so you can only put it in the right way. So don't worry about getting it in backwards. Just make sure to not force it in, because you could break it. The next step is gonna be the power cable. Simply put metal prongs towards the back of the board, orientation with the text this way. It's gonna go into the, the, the plugins right here. They're all multicolored, and it's gonna go into the two red pieces. So, back, two in, so three and four from the top left. That's in, and later on, I'm just gonna click this button to power it on and off. All right, so here we are. I get the 16 gigabyte Lexar USB 3.0. I'm gonna plug it in. Setting this up on just normal PC, Windows 10. And then you're gonna open HDD raw copy tool. You'll see the link for this download in the NVOC thread. It's the same program that Simple Mining OS, SMOS also uses as well. You're gonna go in here and you're gonna select your target file as raw NVOC version, whatever is the most up to date, boom. And then I'm gonna go in here and select the USB drive and it's going to uh, overwrite that for me. You're gonna click, click, boom, and then you are off to the races. So make sure you eject your USB safely before removing it, and you're gonna just insert it into the board, and then to the next to that you see the Logitech USB plug-in, that's my wireless mouse and keyboard. I've inserted one card. Like I said, I love the MSI Arrows. However, I got these on sale for like 630 bucks. I couldn't pass that up for a TI. So here I am using these. I'm going to be using two Asus 1080 Ti's along with a 1080 Mini from Zotac. As you can see, look over here, you'll see my MSI Aero rig operating. And then up here, you will see my Gigabyte 1080 Ti rig operating. Each rig's using a couple of different parts. This is run on a 750 watt PSU, specifically Snow Silent. Honestly, I just think the white looks good, along with the white card, so I spend an extra couple bucks, and I mean, honestly, no regrets here. You'll see, I'm using a PSU that's way too big, that's an AX1500i. I bought that for the Panda Miners that were an absolute fail, but I still got those, so I figured I would just slap it on this rig, and that's what's powering this rig, and that's also what's gonna power this rig right here today. We are gonna plug in the ethernet cable, and then uh, HDMI, and boot this rig up, let's see. So here we are, we finally made it. All right, so we've got everything plugged in for the initial setup. So you can see, we've got the hard drive plugged in, we've got the ethernet plugged in, we've got the HDMI plugged in, we've got the card in and seated correctly, okay? We've got the CPU power, boom. We've got the motherboard power, boom. 
we've got the PCIe power. Boom, boom. Okay, that's two 8 pin and a 6 pin. All right, we've got the RAM in. Double check the CPU. I actually had the uh, wires, they were kind of at risk for being hit by the fan. So I went ahead and just moved them over, tucked them under that little piece, and we're going to be good to go rocking. The RAM in there, it's secured. Okay, we've got the mouse in. We've got, you know, the PSU plugs, double checked, everything's nice and tight. And then I've got the power cable, we're going to plug that from the PSU into the PDU and then fire this up. That, I'm going to bring you over and boom, there are the stats. GPU is up and running, or the rig's up and running, and it's banging out some serious power. Not the most efficient uh, sold per watt. However, it's definitely a high hash rate, you know, almost 1900 souls. And, you know, I'm just on the nano pool right now. I haven't experimented with too many Zcash pools. Um, so that's something I'll move to next. Make sure to subscribe to the Boss Coin YouTube channel to stay up to date on all that kind of stuff. Other than that, as far as the setup, when you log in, you're just going to click on the USB icon and you're going to go to the one bash file and you're going to edit your worker name if you want to. You're going to obviously edit your wallet address unless you want to just uh, mine to full zero, which honestly is cool. Support the guy for doing what he does. And then um, you can go in there and change the power limits and the clock settings and the memory and all that stuff. So again, super easy intuitive software. You can edit it with just notepad on your PC before you plug it in. I, you know, I booted the rig up with one card and then I put in two cards make sure everything's looking good and then I put in all three cards and then that's where we are now and so it's fully operational it's getting recognized on the pool already almost instantly as you can see my garage is getting toasty especially with these cranked up I want to crank them down to be to a uh, higher efficiency um, you know low power high efficiency that's my goal and that's also going to be a lower heat output so again another day another time another video I gotta go work soon so I gotta go grab my stuff and get ready that's what they say about the night shift, you know. See you guys later. Anyway, so other than that, uh, there's really nothing else for me to say. You saw the build start to finish. If you've got questions, drop a comment below. I may make an updated one in the future. Again, I'm not the expert here. I didn't design this. I just did it. Followed the guide that Phil on the form essentially laid out and some others are doing as well. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to the Boss Coin YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Oh,